Good morning. Welcome to worship. You who are in the room, a great big welcome to Brody White and his family here for his baptism. If you're worshiping over the radio or KDI or Facebook Live, we invite, welcome you as well, and you can be a part of the meal of Holy Communion. So we encourage you to gather some bread and wine or juice to be ready for the meal. I want to make sure when you walked in, you got one of these little, I'm going to steal yours, Lauren one of these little pieces of paper that's in color. Does anybody still need one of these? You're gonna hear a little bit more. So I wonder if the worship leaders would walk around with some of these inserts so people can have one in their hands. And we're going to prepare our hearts and our minds now for worship. So as we hear the centering song, I invite you to take a moment. Um, This is your moment to let go of anything that might get in the way of worship of this time for you to spend with Jesus. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. I'll invite Sophia Mackey up to the pulpit at this time. This is our fall stewardship campaign time. So those little inserts that you have tell, will tell in the next three weeks about the different ministry initiatives that your leadership has discerned. So we're really excited to share with you the things we're looking forward to in the next year. Sophia is going to talk about the first ministry initiative and share with you what ministry, what your generosity does at St. John. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Sophia Mackey. I'm a lifelong member of St. John's and a senior at Dickinson High this year. Last month, Pastor Lisa asked me to share a vision for St. John that makes me feel excited to be a part of this community and faith. As I've said earlier, just a second ago, I've gone to this church since I can remember. This church offered me many ways to be active and feel like I'm a part of it, even when I was a young child. I remember using the worship bags during church, coloring and listening to the pastor talk, and then being old enough to go to church school and then reaching seventh grade and starting confirmation. I'll be honest with you, going to confirmation every Wednesday night wasn't something I considered to be the highlight of my week, but I enjoyed the activities like visiting the nursing home or knocking on the doors of people's homes around seven in the evening, interrupting their downtime to ask if they had food they were willing to donate to the Amen Food Pantry. Some of them answering the door in their underwear to give us boxes of ramen noodles. But for the most part, confirmation was something I was really looking forward to getting over with. But then when I got older, I started to realize I had a lot more questions about faith. Many of those questions I wish I asked when I was in confirmation. When I was confirmed in October of 2020, this church offered many ways to continue to be present. I became a church school teacher the following year and had my own classroom full of kindergartners and helped my sister with her classroom full of fifth graders. Last year, I had a classroom full of some wild and curious first graders. I loved getting to help some of the youngest youth of this church find their faith and form their beliefs. Sometimes they would teach me things too, like even though Jesus had bad days, he still had strength to show others kindness, or that Jesus had a pet dinosaur and drove a monster truck. 
This summer, I went to Fort Myers, Florida on a mission trip. We spent the week helping communities recover from Hurricane Ian. Our group was able to touch the lives of people we otherwise would not have met. Together, we remembered that our faith sends us out to serve. The last full work day we had, some of us went to Habitat for Humanity and others went to St. Matthew's Secondhand Store in Immokalee. In the store, I was rearranging the clothes, organizing them by size and what kind of clothes they were. And while I was doing it, I was thinking about whether or not me sorting the clothes in this store would have any significance or if it'd be helping anyone. Then, a woman came into the area I was in and she was in a wheelchair and had an oxygen hose. She came and looked around and then said something to herself about not seeing what she needed. Then she came up to me and asked me if I knew where the pajamas were. I showed her where the shelf was at and while she looked through it, she told me she was looking for some things to take to the hospital with her because she had stage four cancer. I realized that even though it wasn't major, me rearranging the clothes had some significance for her. I appreciate the ways that the church equips me to be a Christian. But again, I still have questions, the ones that I didn't ask when I was in confirmation. One of St. John's visions is cultivating curiosity and honest conversations. We know as a congregation that questions don't stop after confirmation. After going through church school and confirmation, I'm still a little unsure of what it means to have faith. It matters to me that this church encourages curiosity and conversation. It matters that next year there will be a weekend just like questions for mine. This is the ministry initiative inside of your guys' bulletins to offer a retreat for young adults. At the retreat, there will be Bible study and place to wonder. Maybe during the retreat we would walk through the new self-guided prayer walk that's mentioned in your bulletin insert, or maybe we would pray together for our neighbors in the Central African Republic. St. John's has taught me that our faith sends us out to serve. And on the back of your bulletin insert, you can see how we serve God together with our offering. Thank you for each gift. Because of these offerings, I know you care about my faith and my questions. You can see a couple of questions for you to ponder. Remember, we can ask questions together. We can ask what God might do through our gifts and to equip and engage future generations. And hopefully, we can always have curious and have honest conversations. Thank you. Please join in the call to worship you can find on the screen and in your bulletin you can read the bold print. Praise God in this holy place. Praise God with prayer and singing. Praise God with instruments and voices. Praise God with all our siblings in Christ. Worship begins where your walk with God begins, where Brody's journey with God will begin today at the waters of baptism. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. After a moment for reflection, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. 
Please stand and join in singing our processional hymn, All Creatures Worship God Most High. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of joy, you are here with us in this place of worship and community. Make us to dance as David and all the house of Israel did in response to your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. If you are just joining us on the radio or on Facebook, again, welcome to you. Your assisting minister today is Kate Enney. So I'd like to walk us into the story a bit. We're going to sing a psalm because it's part of the reading. So we move all the way from the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible through the academic year, and we're now at the part of the Bible that is about the kings. So we're just meeting the kings in the Bible, the first king was Saul, didn't work out very well. The second king was David. So in today's story, David is being anointed as the king. So what you need to know about David is he gets more words in the Bible than anybody else. I think even more than Jesus, we hear about King David. David was a leader who did some really great things, and he was a human being who messed up some things as well. He's a perfect example of all of us who are both sinner and saint, all at the same time as Martin Luther described us. So that's David. But no matter what we say about King David, one thing is very clear, he loved the Lord. He loved God so much that in this story, you can see him dancing with joy because of how much he loves the Lord. And the song that is sung as David is dancing down the street is the psalm that we will sing in a moment. So you need to know about David. You also need to know about the Ark of the Covenant. So in this time, in this reading, the Ark of the Covenant was the most important symbol in the lives of God's people. So when we talk about the Ark of the Covenant, you can picture a wooden box with some wings on top of it, and in that wooden box were the stone tablets of the Ten Commandments. But the most important thing about that wooden box was that was the Lord's presence. So people were mostly nomadic in those days where they would pitch a tent and stay somewhere and then they would move along but the box that was the Ark of the Covenant always went with them until God's people lost a battle and the Philistines stole it away. And when the Philistines brought the Lord's presence into their village, everybody got the bubonic plague immediately. So it was not a good thing for that box to be moved. So in this story, the people of God had just gotten the Ark of the Covenant back. So if you can imagine how joyful they were to again have this most important symbol of the Lord and their faith back in their community. They were so happy they sang all about it and let's do that too. 
I invite you all to sing the refrain of today's acclamation. We'll start with the refrain, I'll sing the verses, and then we'll go back to the refrain. Kate, sorry for reading the narrator part. You have a part as well. The tribe lines are yours, so don't miss your part. A reading from 2 Samuel. Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 40 years. At Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and at Jerusalem, he reigned over all Israel and Judah 33 years. David gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. David and all the people with them set out and went from Baalie Judah to bring up from there the Ark of God, which was called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who enthroned them on cherubim. They carried the Ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, were driving a new cart with the Ark of God, and Ahio went, from, went in front of the ark. David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, with the songs of lyres and harps and tambourines and cascanets and cymbals. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give thanks for your presence among us. Come and keep us company when life feels heavy, when the darkness feels heavy. Keep us company whenever we forget that you are right there beside us. So you who know the needs of our hearts, surround us with your presence that we might leave this place ready to be a blessing to those in need. In your name we pray. Amen. One of the treasures of living in North Dakota happens in the dark. It happens when the sun gets tucked below the horizon and the moon begins to reflect its light. 
Where we live, we can see the stars, the sea of stars at night, maybe as well as King David and all of the people who lived at that time. Now, because I grew up on the northern end of North Dakota, I would say the view gets even better the further north you go, but my husband, who grew up in Bowman, might not agree. Even so, this story happens in the north, along Highway 28, under a dark and starry sky. But that night, the night of this story, the stars were not the only light that pierced the darkness. So the year was 1995, and our high school speech team was nearing the end of a very good season. Under the guidance of our speech coach, Mrs. Pearson, we had won most of the speech competitions, and we were on our way home from the regional tournament in Minot with a plaque that read Region 8 Champions. So you might not be familiar with high school speech, but I bet you do know what happens when a small town has any kind of champion to celebrate. So that night, driving north on Highway 28, the darkness was lit up, not only by those bright stars of North Dakota, but by a procession of headlights waiting for us at the Lorraine corner. How long was this line of cars? 15, 20, who knows? But in the darkness, that line of cars ready to process with us into Sherwood, ready to process behind us with horns honking, lit up the night sky. There's a power in procession. In the headlights that welcomed home their regional champions, the drivers had stopped what they were doing that day to create a single line and celebrate. There is power in a procession. Now, in certain seasons of the year, like this one, we have a procession here at church, too. It is a celebration without the headlights and the horns honking. Except during Advent, Lent, and Christmas, and in the summer when worship is quieter, the very first hymn we sing is called the processional hymn. Other times of the year, it is the gathering hymn. But when the first hymn is the processional hymn, a seventh grade student leads the procession of worship leaders. And why do we do this? Not every church has a procession. There's more than one way to begin worship. But here we process, following the cross of Christ, a cross that is empty because Christ has died and rose again already. This cross calls our attention to the one whom we follow together. It's a routine moment. It's routine if you've been around here for a while, and it's still a moment that should disrupt us. We follow the cross of Christ as one worshiping body. So that means no matter who you are or where you've been or what you've done or what's happened in your life, this cross, this cross, calls us together, erases our differences if only for this moment we get to worship together. The people in the cars following our speech team down Highway 28, they hadn't been to the regional meet, they'd maybe not even heard any of our speeches, and yet there they were, this one line of cars traveling through the darkness together that one night in 1995. There is power in a procession. You can see it in the reading for today. David, who's now King David, he was part of this procession into Jerusalem carrying the Ark of the Covenant. According to the reading, there were thousands of people who were part of this great big procession bringing the Ark back home, which meant the presence of the Lord was returning, and they were ready to celebrate. In the chapters we've skipped since last week's reading, it's been a rough time for God's people they had been through wars, they had buried soldiers. We can imagine the Middle East then, maybe something like it looks right now. But in this reading, at least, God's people were on the other side of the war. This tiny underdog nation had somehow won, and they brought home this more than a plaque, the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of the Lord, 
So they were celebrating. With all of the instruments we sang about in Psalm 150, with tambourines and cymbals, this procession was a party, celebrating the Lord's presence in the worst of times. Praising the Lord, they became one worshiping body again, like one long line of cars, one people following the Lord together. So that's why we begin worship with a procession. We become one people following the Lord together. There's power in a procession, power to make us one. When you come to worship, you come from all kinds of places. You have different jobs, you're retired or you're going to school, your political views differ, your family history differs. Some of you cheer for different football teams. Some of you could care less about football, and all that is okay. It's an incredible variety of us who get together, who sit together, who sing together. In that procession, we celebrate the presence of the Lord that gathers us together. We are, as the Apostle Paul writes in Galatians, no longer Jew or Greek or slave or free or male or female, for you are all one in Christ. There's power in the procession. The idea Mark Surley wrote in a book called Liturgy Made Simple is that wherever we come from, whatever we've been doing, we come together now in the body of Christ. We lose our individuality to find our common identity. We let the noise and the preoccupation of our lives die away as we become aware of him in whose presence we stand, and of those with whom we stand. The power of the procession is the presence of the Lord walking with us as a congregation, walking with you in your own life through the celebrations and the sorrows. The procession reminds you, you don't stumble through the darkness alone. You don't carry the burden of your grief or failure or shame or disappointment alone. You don't walk alone in the dark. But in the procession, you discover these headlights everywhere, piercing the night sky. You get to see, once again, that the one whom we follow has made us one. Amen.
welcome Brody to the baptismal font, I invite you to turn in your hymnals to the Liturgy for Holy Baptism at the front of your book on page 227, where the numbers are on the bottom of the page, 227. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about what we're doing. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ and anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Thank you. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you, Marin and Shane, desire to have your child baptized into Christ? And it is the church's role to help you carry out all of these promises. As you bring your child to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, bring, them, bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture him in faith and prayer so that your child may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your child grow in the Christian faith and life? Sponsors, do you promise to nurture this person in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? People of God, do you promise to support Brody Lee and pray for him in his life, new life in Christ? We do. Sponsors and parents, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Joined by the assembly, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus, death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, Brody, I just marvel at this crew of people who gets to hang out with you. They are lucky people. All right. So I'm gonna pour a little water on your forehead. I'll be really fast, and I'm gonna do it three times. <laughs> and wherever you are, I'll get water on you, so it's okay. All right, come on over. This is, do you wanna feel it? You can put your hand in there first. It's just warm, it's pretty warm. It's all right, all right. Brody Lee, I baptize you in the name of the Father. There you go. And the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
I might have gotten Jill as wet as you. <laughs> it's okay. There you go. I'm sorry. You look so nice. Yes. This is for you forever. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth and cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Brody Lee with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Brody Lee, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit, marked at the cross of Christ forever. And we have a present for you. Actually, we have a couple. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome, welcome you into, into the, the body of Christ, Christ and, and into the mission we share. Join, Join us in the whole day. Praise to God. And bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. So Brody, that candle is yours and your parents can light it every year and tell you a little bit more about this day and these incredible people. And there's another present over there for you. It's a bib, but it's a special present. All right, we're going to sing you a song and you can blow that out. Yeah, you can blow that God's justice is sure. We pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of all the nations, let your presence be known in Gaza. Strengthen health care workers and comfort the sick and dying. Protect civilians and bring an end to the war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God with us. With King David, we rejoice in song and dance and knowledge of your presence in this place. Bless those who structure and lead us in worship, that we may feel meaningfully connected to you and your faith community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask your blessing on the waters of baptism for Colson James Wandler and Brody Lee White today. May they be reminded every day that they are clothed with your mercy and forgiveness all the days of their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Even David, the most beloved king of Israel, was, deep, was a deeply flawed human. Give all leaders the humility to recognize their limitations and commit themselves to putting the needs of others ahead of their own. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You promise to turn our mourning into dancing. Hold all who suffer illness or grief, that they might know your presence and be comforted. We ask especially for your peace for Lisa Stoltz at the death of her mother. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for all who fill our lives and our world with song. Inspire musicians throughout the world to keep us singing and dancing our love for you. We pray for the youth and chaperones who attended LYO. May they continue to sing your praises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As you guide the associate pastor call process, we pray for the candidate, Pastor Mary Wiggins. Bless her in her discernment. Grant us wisdom next week as the congregation votes. Lead St. John faithfully into the future you desire for this congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we turn all these things over to your tender care, trusting that you hear and answer our prayers, spoken and unspoken, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please stand as you may. We share the peace to prepare our hearts for Holy Communion. The peace of Christ be with you always.
may all be seated as we continue with the offering. invite you to stand as you may and join in singing as the ushers bring the gifts to the table. you have made all you have made is good and your love endures forever you bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine nourish us with these gifts that we may be for you, the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord Amen. Amen. we'll continue with the words of institution and then the Lord's Prayer <clears throat> In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray, as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. If you are worshiping online, you can share the bread and the wine with each other now. If you happen to be by yourself, this is the body of Christ given for you, and this is the blood of Christ shed for you. 
For you who are in the room, you can come on up the center aisle, just follow the people ahead of you, fill in the rail from the end to the center, and then return to your seat up the side aisle. You are welcome at this meal of mercy. Come as you are.
Receive the blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us sing together. God, in this meal you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us at your table with food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Now send us forth to be your people in the world and to proclaim your truth this day and evermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You can see in your bulletin lots of ministry going on and next Sunday on the 29th, there is everything going on you can think of, almost. It is Reformation Sunday, a day with great music, celebrating the Reformation. It is the day you will vote on the associate pastor candidate, Pastor Mary Wiggins. So that is next week at 10.30, right in this space. Uh, it is Confirmation Sunday for our ninth graders. So if you walk through the commons area, you can see all of the stoles on display, the stoles that will be placed on their shoulders uh, during the confirmation service next week at two o'clock. So lots of great stuff going on. Please be a part of that day next week. Please stand as you may. And we're going to sing our benediction, so we'll sing together praise and thanksgiving. Sending him is O oh, Sing to the Lord. Thanks to Kayla Kilwine for leading the psalm and for some percussion as well. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.